Everyone has bad hair days, and curly hair is known to be very unpredictable. Whether if your wash day resulted in very frizzy hair, stringy hair, crunchy curls, or maybe they just fell flat and look very limp, there are some things you can tweak in your routine to ensure you get your desired results. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Gina, and here I make videos all about naturally curly hair. I love doing simplified step-by-step -step routines and really helping you problem solve with your hair so that everyone can achieve healthier curls. And that's what we're doing in this video. I'm going to help you problem solve with your own hair so that way you know what to tweak in your routine the next time you go to wash your hair. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back to my channel. Let's go ahead and get started. So I first wanted to call out how damaged hair is known to be a lot more unpredictable. When our hair is damaged, it can't hold on to moisture as easily. It doesn't really get a gel cast as easily. You might need stronger hold and it can result in a lot more frizz and it can be more susceptible to frizz in high humidity or even in very dry air. It might dry out very easily. So just keep that in mind that if you're currently transitioning your curls and you're trying to get your hair healthy, it's going to be a little bit more unpredictable, but it does get better. I spent three or four years transitioning my hair and I'm still like on my hair journey, but I finally have grown out all the damage and it's been a lot easier to manage. It's a lot easier to refresh my hair and my wash days turn out a lot more consistent. However, bad hair days still happen to everyone. So let's dive into some of the common causes of a failed wash day. So the first problem that we are going to talk about includes frizz and hair that didn't last or curls that just kind of fell flat and you didn't get any gel cast. So they didn't have any hold or definition. Hold is essential at getting the hair to last longer throughout the week and also holding in frizz and helping curls hold their shape. You get hold from products like gel or mousse. Usually more likely gel is going to give you hold in your hair. Creams and oils are not gonna give you any hold in your hair. You need that layer of gel. But one of the biggest things that impacts how much hold that you end up with is if you use too much cream in your hair before your gel. The more moisturizing and ingredients that you add to a gel, the softer hold that you get. So if you're layering a butter or a cream or a very moisturizing leave-in underneath a gel, it might soften up your gel cast. If you really wanna get strong hold and you don't find that your hair needs a ton of moisture, maybe just go with a very lightweight liquidy leave-in conditioner and then a gel, or just skip the leave-in or the cream altogether and go straight to a gel. But I would make sure that your gel has hold to it and also has some moisturizing ingredients. But I still like to layer a cream and a gel, so I just make sure to not use too much cream. Another big cause of not getting a gel cast in your hair is simply not applying enough product. This is why I like to apply my gel in sections and also why I like to brush style after I've applied my gel. I talked about this in my recent video all about how to tame root frizz. And in that video, I share how I like to first apply my cream, then I section my hair and I apply my gel in sections from the ends all the way to the root. So I make sure that I'm completely coating every single strand of hair with gel. So I have an even product application. Every hair has gel on it because I have a ton of frizz in my hair. It leans more high porosity, so I need a lot of hold. So if you're just kind of glazing in some gel after you did brush styling, you're not evenly coating your hair with gel, so you might end up with some frizz or the curls might not last because the product is not evenly distributed or you didn't use enough gel. You can't really just scrunch in gel if you really struggle with frizz. You have to kind of coat your hair with that gel. I would just make sure that you're using a gel that isn't too heavy. You wouldn't want to use too much product if your gel is heavier. I like to go for more lightweight liquidy gels. One of my favorite is the Weedad Advanced Climate Control. That gel is very liquidy, but it gives strong hold. It's also very lightweight and it's moisturizing. So if you can find a gel like that, that's really the best of both worlds where you have that moisture and it's liquidy, it's not too sticky, but then it still dries with a strong hold. That's what you want. Also, if you're using a gel that's just not right for your climate, then you're gonna end up with frizz. If you live in a humid area, you really need some humidity blocking ingredients. You wouldn't wanna use one of those gels that's just like super natural with a ton of humectants and lots of just like plant-based film formers. Like those are great in the winter time, but they don't really do much for you in humidity. You need those ingredients like polyquats that really help to coat the hair and prevent humidity from just frizzing your hair up immediately. So my next common cause of frizz or lack of hold is not using humidity blocking ingredients. So you wanna look for words like polyquaternium, 
Copolymer is another one that can help give hold, but it's the polyquaternium that really helps with humidity and blocking that out. It's similar to a silicone. It can build up on the hair if you use it too much and you keep layering products and you don't clarify. So I would make sure that you're using a lathering shampoo if you're going to use products that contain polyquats in them. So I wanted to show you an example of when I used too much cream and then I used like a very plant-based gel that didn't have a lot of hold. I use the AG Recoil Cream, which is a very moisturizing cream, and I tend to use too much of that and you only need a small amount. So I'm always trying to tweak how much I use with that cream because a little goes a long way. It's a great cream, but it can really soften your gel cast if you use too much. Then I went over it with the Maui Moisture Curl Quench and Coconut Oil Ultra Hold Gel. This is a great gel. It claims to be ultra hold, but it is not. It is a very light hold gel in my opinion. It has aloe in it. It's got glycerin it's got carbomer which is really the only ingredient i think that gives hold it's got coconut water coconut oil it has lots of oils in it which is great for helping hold moisture in your hair but aloe by itself is not enough hold for me it is a film forming humectant so it is still a humectant so it can draw in some moisture but it does create a film on the hair but that's just not enough so you can see how frizzy my hair was it looked great on day one Day two, I think I did a little bit of refreshing and it was fine, but by the time I went out in humidity, I did have a lot of frizz. There are no humidity blocking ingredients in this. And like I said, those film forming humectants are just not enough if you live in a very humid environment. So this was just an example of when I just didn't have enough hold for my liking and for my climate. My curls still looked great on wash day, but they didn't really last after that. Another cause of frizz is protein moisture imbalance. If you did not use any products that have protein in them, you might notice that your hair feels too soft. Some of you also mentioned that you really struggle with your curls just drying without a cast and they feel very soft and they just don't have any structure to them or any hold. Protein can actually help retain moisture in the hair and it can also help the curls hold their shape. I think this is another reason I really love the We Dad Advanced Climate Control Gel because it does contain Contain a small amount of protein in it. It's just the right amount for me to where it doesn't make my hair feel brittle or anything like that. It still gives me really great hold and the curls do last a lot longer because of that protein. So I wanted to show you an example here of a wash day when I used one of my favorite Dove gels that I've used many times before and had great results, but my curls just didn't last and were very soft and fluffy and frizzy by the end of the day and by day two. I used the As I Am leave-in conditioner underneath of it and then the Dove gel on top. The Dove gel does give me a firm hold. It's like a medium to strong hold, but there's no protein in the gel and there was also no protein in the leave-in. I think I just had too much moisture my hair the dove gel is very moisturizing so my curls felt very soft which was nice but they just had no definition by the end of the day and by day two they just dried very frizzy and I was really struggling to get that gel cast and other times that I've used this dove moisture finish gel I had a great result. I used it with the Heritage Ahead of the Curl Curl Cream, which contains quite a few protein ingredients in it, and my results were great. That combination was awesome. So that's why it's so important to test products with different combinations. If you're mixing brands, definitely you wanna do this. If a gel doesn't work for you, try it with a different cream. Try using less cream. There's lots of tweaks you can make to make sure that you are using the product correctly and that you're using the right combination before you just rule it out and say that gel didn't work for me. Now on the flip side, if your hair feels very stiff and brittle, you might have had too much protein and not enough moisture. If you use products that were very strong in protein, maybe you just did a protein deep conditioner or you did a bond building treatment and then you use very protein heavy products and your hair didn't need it, it could feel very stiff and brittle and dry. So both of these cases, lack of protein and lack of moisture can result in frizz and they pretty much look the same. However, I would say that a lack of moisture, that frizz to me looks a little bit different. So I wanted to show you an example of how my hair looks when I don't use a curl cream on wash day and how it looks on day two. So yesterday I was experimenting with the Myel gel that I've been testing out over on my Instagram stories. I wanted to see if I didn't use a cream underneath of it, would I get a stronger hold with it and would it hold up in humidity? Now that gel doesn't have any humidity blocking ingredients in it, but it does have some oils to help with moisture retention. I usually get a soft to a medium hold with it and I did get more of a gel cast when I didn't use a cream underneath. It looked fine on day one. It did get frizzy by the end of the day because it was super humid out, like one of the most humid days that we've had so far this summer. 
But this is how my hair looks on day two. I obviously have a ton of frizz and I just wanted to show you how my hair looks when it's gotten dehydrated, when I don't have enough moisture. This is how I can tell when I don't have enough moisture, mainly the feeling of it. Like this feeling is different than my typical day two hair when I still have moisture, but maybe I just need to touch up some frizz or maybe I just didn't get much of a gel cast. That is a different feeling compared to this dryness. It feels dry, it has like this, kind of rough, crispy feeling almost to it. It looks very dull. I don't have any shine at all. It's looking a little shiny in the sun, but overall it's pretty dull. And also the curls lose their shape. So you see how they're kind of straightened out. I have a lot of these pieces like here that are hanging longer than the rest. They just don't hold a curl as easily. And obviously I have a ton of frizz, but this is just a different type of feeling compared to a regular day two after a wash day. So this is definitely lack of moisture in my hair. Some other causes of frizz or limp curls after wash day can be from air drying. For me, air drying results in way more frizz. I did a whole video comparing air drying versus diffusing. If you are currently air drying, especially if it's humid in your home or outside and you're getting a ton of frizz, you might wanna try diffusing because when you diffuse, you set the gel cast right away. So there's no time for hair to start to frizz up. There's no time for it to start to grab onto moisture in the air. You're setting the gel cast right away, which will prevent frizz. Instead of just air drying for hours on end where the air is just getting to it, the humidity in the air is getting to it, it helps so much. So check out that video for more details on why you might wanna start diffusing. So the next common set of problems that we're going to cover include hair that feels very crunchy or very producty. It could be sticky or even kind of tingly feeling. One of the main causes that I notice when this happens to my hair is from using too much product. Now I know we just talked about making sure that you're using enough gel to get hold, but if you're using a gel or even a cream that is too heavy for your hair and you've also used too much of it, so you were a little bit heavy handed with it, you might have hair that is just too stiff or it might feel kind of producty depending on the ingredients in that product. Certain formulations are meant for hair types that are a lot drier, maybe more coarse hair types or type four hair. And those include products that have lots of butters and oils in them, or even gels sometimes that do have those polyquat ingredients that we talked about or lots of polymers in them that give a lot of hold, you can actually have too much hold sometimes in your routine. This Maui Moisture Gel, as I mentioned, contains a lot of different oils in it. This even says for thick curly hair, it says it contains coconut oil, that's a heavy oil. So when reading the ingredients, I know this is going to be a heavier product. The reason I picked this is because my hair is half coarse, so it can hold on to heavier products, but it's also low density. So if I use too much of a heavy product, my hair can get weighed down. On a recent wash day, I used the Curlsmith Feather Light Protein Cream, but then I used the Curlsmith Shine Gel, which is a very thick gel. Its formula is very thick. It's not a very runny gel. It does contain some polyquat ingredients to help with humidity, which is why I went with this gel, and it does have strong hold. This is like a very strong hold gel. And then I applied it pretty thoroughly. Like I apply a lot of gel because I'm used to using more slippery gels and I did try and dilute it with some water, but I think I just used too much gel. I had kind of a producty feeling on my hair and by that I can tell that it just doesn't feel very like slippery or soft after it's dried. I have some texture to my hair, which can actually help with volume and might be good if you have fine hair, but I still wouldn't use a very thick gel like this if you had fine hair. I would look for more liquidy gels, like the Curlsmith Souffle is a great option, or the Hydro Flexi Jelly, something that is more liquidy, or even the Curlsmith Shape Up Gel that has more slip to it. Anything that is more runny is going to be better than a very thick gel if your hair gets weighed down very easily or you don't like that product feel. Feeling. I could tell after using too much of the shine gel that when my hair was dried and I would like kind of run my finger down a curl, I almost had like a residue on my finger. So if you're feeling that like greasy residue on your fingers when you're touching your hair, then you definitely use too much product or you use products that were too heavy with too many oils in them. Also, if your curls dried with a ton of crunch in them and you could not get the gel cast to scrunch out, like it just looked very stringy, then you probably used too much product. Here's an example of my hair before I scrunched out the crunch. Now I was able to scrunch this out and it looked fine, but I just wanted to show you an example of my hair when it is very just crunchy. It's in the gel cast, which is actually what I'm usually trying to get because I want a lot of hold, and then I just scrunch it out. But there have been times when I've applied too much gel, like 
There was a time that I used too much of the Curl Smith Souffle. That's one of those gels that if you use too much, you do get that stringy look in your hair. And it's just because of the formulation. You just don't want to use too much product. It does have buildable hold, so I would definitely start with less of that gel. It's one of my favorite gels. I love it in the winter time, but you just can't be heavy handed with it because it can be hard to scrunch out. Like I can do all the fluffing with oil and it still kind of looks like PC and kind of stringy. And that's just the formulation of the gel. So try using less product. Also, maybe you didn't know that you can scrunch out the gel cast. Some people who might be new to using gels might not realize that you want to get that gel cast, but then you want to scrunch it out and you still are left with hold if you have a good formulated gel. Whenever I've used a gel that is just not a great formula, I just didn't have enough hold, I might have gotten a cast like right after diffusing, but then I scrunch it and it just frizzes up immediately. Then you don't have a very good gel and you might need to try something else or maybe it's a good gel, but it's just not the right gel formula for you. Another common cause of hair that is super tangly is you might need a trim. Whenever I'm due for a trim, I get so many of those single strand knots or some people call them fairy knots. I actually have quite a few right now because I'm due for a trim. I'm actually going next week. And my hair has been a little bit harder to manage lately and it's a little bit stringy. I'm getting a lot more tangles. It can be harder to refresh. I know I'm due for a trim. Another common cause of very tangly hair is, as I mentioned, just a producty feeling in the hair. This happened to me when I used too much of that shine gel. It has some oils in it and stuff and I just think I used too much because it was a little bit harder to refresh. That's usually why I like going with more lightweight gels like the Weed Edge Gel or the Curl Smith Souffle because they make it a lot easier to refresh and it's just easier overall. Like I don't have a ton of tangles. It doesn't feel gross on refresh days. So I will list my favorite gels that I'm talking about in the description box down below if you're interested. So the next common problem that we are going to talk about in a failed wash day includes hair that is very weighed down, greasy feeling, maybe you have limp curls, or maybe even they're looking very stringy or you just didn't get a lot of volume and your hair looks very flat. So first off, if you have low density hair like me, getting volume is a struggle and sometimes your hair just doesn't wanna cooperate and you don't end up with a lot of volume. That just happens sometimes. You can only do but so much to try and enhance your volume. But if you have very thick curly hair and you just didn't end up with a lot of volume, then it could be because one of these common problems. The first two common causes we already talked about and that includes too heavy products or using too much product. Again, this can really weigh down the hair. If I I use a gel that has a ton of oils in it and I use too much, my hair definitely looks very weighed down and I don't have as much volume. It might feel very nice and moisturized and be very shiny, but it can be a little bit more limp. I've also noticed that on days that I co-wash, my hair is a lot more flat and has less volume. And that is because a co-wash doesn't thoroughly really cleanse the hair. They can be good for a midweek wash, but I would still use a very cleansing or a lathering shampoo once a week at least. Even use a clarifying shampoo. You could alternate between a clarifying shampoo and a co-wash. I actually tried out using a co-wash recently to just show you guys an example of when my hair looks more limp. And I didn't have as much root frizz, which was nice, but it was definitely a lot flatter at the roots. And only using a co-wash can result in buildup, which is actually the next common cause of hair that is very weighed down and limp. If you're suddenly experiencing very limp curls that will just not curl up, you could have hard water buildup or you could have product buildup. I've done a whole video all about hard water. It's one of those things that people often don't think about and could be the cause of their failed wash days that they're not even realizing. And if you're tweaking all these things in your routine and nothing is working, you might wanna look into a clarifying shampoo that removes hard water or a chelating shampoo. I can link you to my favorite one from Amazon down below. It's pretty affordable and it does a great job at both removing product buildup and hard water buildup. Also a lack of protein, like we talked about in your routine can cause your curls to fall more limp. If your hair is over moisturized or if you just don't have enough protein in your routine, your curls might not be springing back up. I've actually done a whole video all about how to improve your curl retention, which is how well your curls kind of bounce back up when you brush them out or when you stretch them. If you're struggling with that and your curls are just not bouncing up, definitely check out that video. I have it linked for you down below. And moisture overload is one of the biggest causes of very limp, kind of mushy feeling curls. Moisture overload is a lot more common than you think, especially when people are starting the curly girl method. It definitely involves a lot of moisture using lots of water in your routine. And if you have like wavy hair, or if you have a looser curl pattern, that can definitely cause your hair to look very limp. If you're using a co-wash and then you're deep conditioning all the time, and then you're using heavy, 
products like butters and oils that are super moisturizing, then your curls are gonna look more weighed down. So I definitely recommend using a lathering shampoo like I mentioned. And I also recommend not using quite as much water in your routine. That's something you could tweak. If you're used to styling with your hair soaking wet, try styling with it a little bit more damp. I like to damp style because I get a lot more volume. The next super common cause of curls falling limp is air drying. Like I mentioned before, if you're only air drying, then your curls could be falling limp because of just gravity and just the weight of all that moisture and water is really pulling your hair down, whereas diffusing sets the curls in that scrunch position, which can help them hold their shape longer. Anytime that I air dry, my curls just don't last. And whenever I just air dry when I refresh, especially if I did like a full refresh where I really wet my hair down, then they just don't last throughout the day. So I definitely need to diffuse usually even on refresh days. Also, if your curls feel damp all day, then you definitely used too much moisture. This actually happened to me yesterday. Like I mentioned, I styled very wet. I used pretty moisturizing products and my curls still felt kind of damp on the inside, even by the end of the day. And that's definitely a sign that you use too much moisture. Your hair shouldn't still feel wet. And I even diffuse too. So even after diffusing, if you still feel like your hair is kind of waterlogged, then you probably had too much water water and too much moisture in your routine. And the next common cause of hair that is very limp or even hair that's very stringy could just be lack of styling. If you're not styling your hair and you're just kind of slapping on some product and kind of scrunching it in and going, that is very quick, but sometimes that can result in more frizz and it can also result in hair that is a little bit stringier or maybe even weighed down if you didn't really pay attention to how you were styling your curls. Another huge cause of stringy hair is when you didn't use enough water in your routine. Now, I know I just talked about using too much water in your routine, but it's one of those things you have to tweak. And that's one of the first things that I tweak if I have a wash day that didn't turn out is I will use more water or less water. And it really depends on the products too. Some products have a lot of water in them already and you don't need to be diluting them even more with water. Water. So that could lead to your hair just being kind of waterlogged. Whereas some products might need a little bit more water. Like I mentioned that Curl Smith Shine Gel doesn't have as much water in it. So it does help to apply it on hair that's a little bit more wet. And also if your hair is looking very stringy or just very limp, you might want to try brush styling. And this is why I mentioned just not really styling your hair. You can get more stringy results. So if you try brush styling, that can really help clump the curls, especially if they're struggling to clump naturally. So if you are currently transitioning, and you're not getting a lot of ringlets in your hair, then brush styling can give you more even curl patterns. So if they kind of end up more like wonky or they're not drying evenly, brush styling might help to where they look a little bit more uniform and you can actually clump them. And then when you scrunch, they spring up even more. So brush styling definitely helps me. So those are all the common causes of a failed wash day. So we talked about three different areas or three different categories and some of the common causes. I will summarize all of this for you on the blog post that goes with this video. So if you're still needing help or you wanna have something to refer back to, maybe it can even be like a cheat sheet for you that you can look at if your hair Hair didn't turn out the way that you hoped that way you could see maybe what those common causes could be so I'll put that blog post link down below and let me know should I do a part two to this video would you want to see how to actually fix a failed wash day through refreshing let me know if you would like to see that maybe I'll do a part two to this video so if you liked this video I think you should also check out the one that I did all about how to improve your curl retention so in that video I talk about how to get bouncier curls how to improve your curl memory and just have longer lasting curls overall. I know a lot of you said you struggle with your curls just falling limp and not holding their definition. So check out that video that's linked right here on the screen and I will talk to you over there. Bye everyone.